Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. We've already covered the history of several of the feisty and ferocious Femi Fatales from the Street Fighter universe on this channel, and today we're going to be continuing this trend. In this exciting episode, we are going to look at the life and times of the Korean Taekwondo kicking vixen herself, Jury. In regards to this character, she may have a haircut that occasionally makes her look a little bit like Satan. But beneath the surface, she's also a devilishly interesting character. So sit back and join me as I retrieve the eye patch from my pirate fancy dress costume and take a deep dive into the world of this mysterious purple clad warrior. Yeah! Capcom introduced Jewelry to the unsuspecting public in 2010 Super Street Fighter 4, which was a rather enjoyable update to 2008 Street Fighter 4. She would be brought into the fold as one of the primary antagonists in the main plot of the game, working as a sort of henchwoman for main boss Seth. This made her the very first female heel or villainess, if you will, of the whole Street Fighter universe up until that point. In many ways, she was given the role of the anti-Chun-Li, a sadistic enforcer for the nefarious Sin organisation that served as China's main counterpart in her fight against the evil criminal group. Big shoes to fill indeed, given how prominent and integral the Chun-Li character is to the Street Fighter narrative. These similarities don't end there though, as both Chunas and Jury had their respective parents killed by that pesky murdering git and perennial nuisance M. Bison, with both swearing revenge on the fancy hat obsessed maniac. While Chun Li's path to revenge took her on a journey of good and integrity, Jury's took her on the route of tax dodging, kicking pensioners, and evil. It was originally suggested that Jury ends up being a sympathetic character and one that was involved in a tragic love story and just ended up in the wrong crowd. But this idea was wisely shot down by Capcom exec Yoshinori Ono, who believed the female character had to be genuinely nasty deep down for her to be truly effective. Quite right too, what's the sense in having a first ever female villain if you're not going to commit to the role? Jury wasn't just the first ever female heel character, but also the first ever Korean character in a Street Fighter game. Devs were specifically instructed to design a female Korean character after popularity of the franchise had soared in Korea, leading many fans to request representation in their favourite fighting series. Supposedly, Capcom's very own Korea branch demanded the inclusion of such a character to Yoshinori Ono, which prompted him to set his little design monkeys the task of concocting one up. Capcom was seen as being ever so slightly behind the curve here, as their direct competitors in the fighting game world, SNK and Namco, had already tapped into the blossoming market and featured Korean characters in their games several years earlier in the Fatal Fury and Tekken series. Nevertheless, Jury's creation process ended up being an arduous and painstaking one, as supposedly somewhere between four to five hundred separate designs were considered before one was eventually greenlit. Every type of Jury you could possibly imagine was suggested, from fat ones to thin ones to ice skaters to MMA fighters. The eventual design featured our girl wearing a black and purple chest plate held on by a spider design on her back, adorned with eight straps in the form of legs, purple fingerless gloves and baggy flowing trousers with the crotch area cut out and her tights showing. She wears foot wraps on her feet and paints her fingernails and toenails a garish bright pink because she's a bloody rebel. They decided they wanted to lean into Jury's sultry and feminine side, making her slightly more overtly sexualized than we had seen in previous female characters, and this came across in both her design and in her attitude. Is it appropriate to have a raunchy character such as this in a game often marketed towards children? Well, the Jury's still out on that one. Get it? Anyway, Jury's list of firsts continue even further, as she was also the first ever practitioner of Taekwondo in a Street Fighter game. Quite surprising given just how many characters we'd seen in the franchise at this point, and how many of the other martial arts had already been represented, including some pretty silly ones. 
I mean, at what point during the process of learning yoga stretches does one start spitting out fireballs and teleporting? But I digress. Taekwondo is a very popular and very flashy form of martial arts, which incorporates lots of high knees and fancy spinning techniques, as well as traditional punches and low kicks. It's the natural choice for our girl Jewelry as it's originated from her native Korea and has been shown in recent years to be a very effective form of real world combat as several MMA fighters have incorporated the techniques into their own repertoires. This includes several fighters that heavily lean on this style who would go on to become UFC champions such as Valentina Shevchenko, Anthony Pettis and Bas Rutan to name a few. This would lead Jury's offense to be almost exclusively kick-based bar one or two hand strikes which gives her a very unique arsenal of moves and specials. Not too dissimilar to fellow heel Balrog or distinguished gent and Street Fighter 3 alumni Dudley who almost exclusively uses boxing based offence. A lack of projectiles and forward range attacks mean her best work is done up close, but the fearsome and rather annoying if you're playing against her dive kick combo make Jury a formidable opponent at distance too. Jury's outfit is also intended to be a super stylized version of traditional taekwondo attire with the idea that her silhouette when fighting would resemble a taekwondin's movements. This is typical with Capcom's record of handling the history of martial arts in the Street Fighter games. It's mostly done with more accuracy, integrity and attention to detail than one would expect in a fantastical cartoonish fighting game. Personality wise, Jury is pretty much the antithesis of the main female characters we've seen up until this point, demonstrating ruthlessness and an absolute lack of compassion at every available opportunity. Jury is devoid of honour and is driven by vengeance and inflicting pain rather than the thrill of competition. She does love fighting and gets extremely angry when the opportunity for a good old scrap is taken away from her, but that's only because she can't get enough of torturing her opponents. The nasty cow. It's this attitude mixed with her incredibly fiery and unpredictable temper that makes her extremely bloody dangerous, both as a sin operative and as a street fighter competitor. She's also calculated and cunning to the extreme, will think nothing of backstabbing her own colleagues and has probably turned heel on more of her own partners than Shawn Michaels and Kevin Owens combined. In the words of her own boss Seth, she respects no laws, no morality, she does whatever it takes to achieve her goals and quench her limitless thirst. How poetic. Despite her predominantly unscrupulously ruthless characteristics, she has been known to show flashes of compassion once in a while, such as in the Super Street Fighter 4 animated movie where she spared the life of a young boy. She's not going to make it to Bison's hat level of evilry if she continues with that sort of nonsense. In addition to her high level martial arts skills and cat like cunning, what makes Jury really dangerous is a powerful device known as the Feng Shui engine, which is implanted into her left eye and greatly enhances her speed, strength and fighting ability to almost superhuman levels. This device was implanted by Sin after Jury had lost her left eye many years earlier when it was shot out by Shadaloo Henchman during an attempt to kidnap her father. Our girl's Super Street Fighter 4 story begins with her getting a mystery phone call from an unnamed caller who appears to either be Seth or a fellow Sin operative informing her of an upcoming tournament. Upon discovering that the tournament is no holds barred and hopefully that's got nothing to do with the dreadful Hulk Hogan movie, our girl's sadistic nature kicks in and she lets out a sinister chuckle before it's off to the proverbial races. After smashing through the early rounds and making quick work of her opposition, it's heel versus heel time as she squares off with her arch nemesis M. Bison in the semi-final. I was really planning on saving the main course for last, quipped Jury before informing Bison that she's just going to eat him up anyway. Despite Bison's overwhelming power, Jury managed to defeat him, which sets up her final match with main boss Seth. After defeating the Silver Surfer lookalike, Jury's completion screen shows up that she had always intended to usurp Seth as head of Sin and her plot to turn all the villains against each other while she took over had worked perfectly. How very cunning of her. 
we are left with our girl taking the role of judge, jury and executioner as she brutally stamps her foot down with all of her force into Seth's chest, crushing his tandem engine, ostensibly killing him and quoting Megadeth as she tells him to rust in peace. Jewelry proved to be an extremely popular character with audiences after her first appearance, and fans were clamouring to have her back in the next main game. Ironically, it was mainly in Japan and the West where she garnered the most popularity, as Korean audiences hadn't taken to her as much as expected. Still, it was an absolute no-brainer to have her in Street Fighter V given the overwhelming fan support, so she was included amongst the very first season of downloadable characters released to the public in July 2016. Jury's main attire has been altered to a more sleek collared bodysuit with an open front but maintaining the general aesthetic and purple and black theme of before. Her story starts with an ambush attack from behind at the hands of the devious bison after the two had squared off. Bison used this element of surprise to get hold of our poor girl's head and rip the Feng Shui engine right out of her eye socket with his psycho power. Our girl next chips off to what is left of Sin Laboratories to try and construct a new eye, which she does in the form of a Feng Shui Alpha. Wow, you can really tell Capcom named that one. Here she bumps into Colleen, who is disguised as Helen, and offers Jury the opportunity to join up with her to take down Shadaloo. Jury promptly rejects the offer, but then bumps into Balrog, who she decides is the perfect candidate for testing out her new eye's abilities. After her fight with the Mike Tyson inspired brawler, C Viper turns up and tells our girl that the only reason she's not being arrested is because she isn't the real threat. If we read between the lines here, we can see that this is because the real ominous threat is coming from Shadaloo. This is confirmed when Jury chips over to Shadaloo base to try and find out just what the dickens is going on and bumps into the ridiculous looking Fang. After the man with the world's most unnecessary sleeves uses his poison clouds to make our girl flee, she finally reluctantly calls Helen to agree to join up with her to stop these horrible little Shadaloo mugs. Jury's presence in the Street Fighter V lore wasn't just restricted to her main story appearance though, far from it. She was an extremely busy little scamp during this period, and she not only played a fairly prominent role in the huge and shockingly 3 DLC expansion, A Shadow Falls, but here she would join a plot to dethrone Shadaloo with Charlie Nash and Helen, and subsequently travel to Brazil to drive a badass motorcycle, and accuse Vega of being a big pervert, which let's face it, it is probably pretty accurate. The Swine. Jury also made cameo appearances in the main story arcs of Cammy, Guile, Abigail and Seth stories. Most amusing is how she pops up in Abigail's story as he is complaining about feeling flat, which leads to a misunderstanding between the two in which Jury believes he has accused her of being flat chested. As of the time of making this video, all we have is a poxy little 40 second Street Fighter 6 preview clip. Grrr. So it's hard to say whether Jury will play a prominent role in that game, or even show up at all. Although given the success of her character, it seems pretty unlikely she won't play some sort of role. There are however a couple more in-game Jury appearances to talk about, as she has showed up in several crossover games. The first of which being 2012 Street Fighter Cross Tekken, which sees our girl in an unlikely tandem with Bison after she shockingly accepts his request to team up with him to help him take control of the Pandora box. Their story concludes with both heels predictably turning on each other, and the scene ending with a Rocky vs Apollo at the end of Rocky Freeze style double punch freeze frame. That same year, she would show up in another Namco crossover title, this time for the 3DS, Project X-Zone or Cross Zone, in a rival unit alongside Seth before switching sides and moving to the hero unit mid-game. The sequel, Project X-Zone 2, released three years later, would also see our girl show up once again as a rival unit and once again in an unlikely pairing with Bison. It is unknown whether she had been forced to align with her nemesis here or whether she has done so by choice, as she remains on the rival unit throughout the game and no real storyline explanation is given. But it is no way canon and I don't think anyone remembers those games anyway, so it doesn't really matter. If any of you would like to learn more about Capcom's often overlooked relationship with Namco 
and the obscure games that their partnership produced, you're in luck because there is a video dedicated to that very subject elsewhere on this channel. So click that one after this one. Jury's most recent to date appearance was in 2017's digital collectible card game Shadowverse, where she appears alongside Bison and Kami. Shadowverse is a curious little free to download mobile game by Psy Games using the Unity engine that has been extremely successful, netting an apparent $100 million in revenue during its first year and has spawned multiple animated spin off series. Hmm, why do I feel like I am being paid to promote a mobile game right now? I'm genuinely not this time. Anyway, that just about rounds it up. Who knows what might be next on the horizon for Jewelry? With a recent announcement of Street Fighter 6 and the hype for what Capcom are about to feed into our eager hungry little begging mouths, one thing is clear, I for one am extremely excited to see what's next for her. After all, no one can pull off an eye patch quite like her. So I guess ladies and gentlemen that was the story of Jury, the anti-Chun-Li. If you enjoyed this video I have provided in-depth coverage of various other Street Fighter characters that you may want to go back and watch. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to ensure you get new videos like this that are added to my content library so that you can all continue to expand your knowledge of Street Fighter lore. Videos like this are in part made possible due to the generous people who support what I do on Patreon. So shout outs go out to a murder of crows, Carl Johnson, Heo Paulo Lopez, Nostalgia Collector, Ben Haradine, Corey I Marcinia, Ryan Dinch to Evan Border, Philip Manth, Azarakai, Dropkin Varela, Michael Collix, Ego, Jordan Durant, Ian Boyle, Nick Daniels, Prince Zana, Daniel Daly, Computer Man, House of the Ted, Gary Pinkett, ECU Professor, Johnny Holly, August Piazza, Justin Wang, Capcom vs SNK, Hermes Gonzalez, Man Shovel, Michael Hall, Sanghi, Norma Sticks, Langston Miller, Noob, Sarah Powell, Blaming Renee, Marvin Aaron Liga. TOG Driver, Luis Viant, John Bates, David Bow, Chris Fisk, Rick67, Antonio Rodriguez, Craig Jenkins, Synth Spaces, Punk Toast, and everybody else who backs what I do on the Patreon platform. Thank you very much. Yeah. Cheerio.